Matt Hamilton, who had previously served as a senior executive at Ripple, caused a stir on May 3, 2023, when he revealed that Ripple intended to construct a special XRP ledger that would be used exclusively for digital currencies that were issued by central banks. Hamilton offered some information to cryptocurrency firms who are now working on a private version of the XRP ledger for state-backed digital currencies as the EUR. This was while Hamilton was serving as the head of developer relations at Ripple. His remarks were taken seriously, but doubts were raised about whether the value of XRP on this co-ledger was in line with what the general public believed or whether it was something quite different. As, as always, we are delighted to have you back as your one-stop shop for all things relating to XRP. If you are new to this site, make sure to click the subscribe button and ring the bell to receive the most recent information regarding all of our XRP discussions. There was a swirl of speculations that were sparked by Black Swan Capitalists, a non-adventure investor who claimed to have examined this private ledger. They also shared photos illustrating the incredible price of XRP on this elusive platform, which was $327,000. Following the disclosure of this information, there was a heated discussion on the true worth of XRP on this private version, as well as the existence of the ledger. However, this is where the story becomes more complicated. Republic Palo was brought up in a podcast that we listened to not too long ago. In what way does this matter? Especially noteworthy is the fact that Ripple and the Republic of Paleo worked together in the past, particularly when they were in charge of the very first stable coin trial in the history of the world, which was based on the XRP network. According to the theory, these stakeholders ought to be notified about the XRP price on this mysterious ledger, as well as the particulars of its existence in the episode that is currently being discussed. As part of our examination into this mystery, make sure you are prepared to see a video featuring the Minister of Finance of the Republic of Paleo. Be yourself and come. The Finance Ministry of the Republic of Palo placed a higher priority on the public ledger due to its openness. Yet, their statement does neither confirm nor deny the existence of a private ledger, leaving the door open for the possibility that it is a reality. The, the primary reason we decided to use the public XRP ledger was because of its transparency. Communicating our milestones and current projects transparently has always been a priority for us. So far, the voyage has been extremely rewarding, even though it has not been devoid of difficulties. Ripple's pioneering effort, which included trial and experimentation over the entirety of its support, has been extremely helpful in overcoming these obstacles. About this purported private ledger, a great number of individuals are curious about the value of XRP. An audio snippet from another podcast that will be broadcast shortly has been discovered by us. Shortly speculative value of the XRP on this covert network will become more clear as a result of this. According to a well-known idea, if the public and private ledgers do converge, then the prices of both sets of ledgers would combine to form an average. However, this supposition is still theoretical, and there is no concrete evidence to support it. David Short, in his capacity as Chief Technology Officer of Ripples, was present for these discussions. Take a peek at the anticipated prices that will be displayed on the XRP private ledger. Even though it is not definitive, it provides a general notion of the potential value that the private ledger might assign to XRP. Even though I've already brought it up, I will repeat it once more. So there is a private ledger. It is not something that has been made up. I was able to witness this firsthand in a YouTube video that lasted for five minutes and was broadcast live from Japan. The public ledger is another topic that is discussed in that movie. The true conflict is about to begin. In what way are they able to differentiate between the private and public ledgers of the XRP? Even though it is not possible to overstate the level of difficulty involved in this endeavor, allow me to keep my primary focus. Taking into account all of these particulars, I am convinced that there will come a time when the lines that separate the public ledger and the private ledger will become blurry and convergence will take place. However, in the meantime, it is essential to have unambiguous regulations, according to what I've gathered. They are still in the testing period with this private company, and this ensures that there will be no uncertainty when they eventually operate together. Ledger is now adding a huge twist to this scenario by announcing that they intend to enter the XRP lending sector. The Bank of Japan, generally known as SBI, has recently made this announcement. This is not a trivial topic. It unequivocally points to the fact that large financial players have taken a strong interest in XRP. The introduction of this brand new lending service 
places an emphasis on the bank's goal of utilizing XRP for institutional transactions. And it raises the issue of why Japan would engage unambiguous XRP loans if they did not believe that cryptocurrency would play a significant role in the future. It is not just a loaning exercise. It is a strategic banking maneuver to capitalize on the emerging cryptocurrency trend. The appeal of XRP is not just its speculative value is a promising instrument for cross-border transactions on a massive scale for retail consumers. And on the business front, we are witnessing a significant increase in the number of people using XRP. Uh, the perspective that I am advancing becomes truly compelling when you take into consideration the strategic move that the Bank of Japan has made after conducting numerous tests and determining the appetites of both individuals and institutions for XRP, they are now lending it. The paradigm shift financial organizations are not simply hoarding XRP. Rather, they are incorporating it into useful utility initiatives to capitalize on its promise of facilitating frictionless payments across borders and transfers between institutions. There is no such thing as a phenomenon that is peculiar to Japan. Banking titans all over the world are coming together. Take, for example, the official partnership that MasterCard and Ripple have formed. Um, to Ripple is not only interacting with MasterCard's main arm through this agreement, but it is also connecting with other subsidiaries of MasterCard, such as Fluency Consensus, Yak Dareth, and a great number of other subsidiaries that are not even named here. MasterCard is not simply a credit card corporation. Rather, it is a massive force in the payment processing industry that operates through a broad network of subsidiary companies. Their participation not only serves as a, as a sign of endorsement, but also highlights liquidity and the possibility of attaining scale. Allegations that MasterCard and Ripple collaborated with the express strategic purpose of using Ripple as the primary payment mechanism from the very beginning have been widely circulated. However, they are not supported by any evidence. I want to make it clear that what I'm sharing with you here is guesswork and conjecture. I am attempting to supply you with all of the information, news, and buzz that is currently available. I would want to bring to everyone's attention the fact that the reason I provided for why MasterCard might have affiliated with XRP is nothing more than a conjecture. The fact that the design of RippleNet is based on demand liquidity, which is primarily driven by the XRP cryptocurrency and its ledger, is something that is common knowledge. As a result, the XRP ledger would be utilized automatically in the event that MasterCard made the decision to authorize payments through RippleNet. Despite the fact that it is speculative, this revelation brings to light the seriousness of such a collaboration and the potential consequences that it could have. Please bear in mind that I am not a licensed financial consultant and that the information contained in these films is just meant to be entertaining. They're provided for your enjoyment uh, before making any decisions regarding uh, their finances. I always recommend to viewers that they conduct their own study and consult with professionals. Many, many thanks for stopping by. Uh, it would be greatly appreciated if you could give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to click the option to subscribe. Make sure the notifications are turned on so that you are the first to know when I post new content. Uh, it will be great to see you again in the next video, and I'm looking forward to it. Take care of yourself.